Alright, so in this video we're checking out the Runcam Racer 3. This is their uh, latest micro camera with the 1000 TV line uh, CMOS sensor. This is basically the Fox Air Predator sensor that they've made a little bit of improvements on in each new model. So this is obviously the third iteration. And you can see here now we have a full size case. So there's no exposed chips or anything on the back. Just make it a little bit heavier. I'll show you the way here a little bit later comes in two lens versions. The one here on the right is a 2.1 millimeter lens with a 145 degree field of view and the 1.8 millimeter lens is the other version with a 160 degree field of view. They're both 4.3 and 16.9 aspect ratio switchable and NTSC and PAL switchable just like before and they have the same 6 millisecond very fast low latency that all of these um, predator like uh, sensors have. So in addition to the fully enclosed case as one of the new features of this version, uh, they have improved the color reproduction a little bit. It's not quite as muddy as before on the version 2. There's now a little bit better filtering in the electronics now, so when you do take direct VBAT power, you do uh, get a little bit less uh, electrical noise in the video feed. However, I still recommend that you do use some sort of a voltage regulator like a 5 volt or a 9 volt regulator. That will still give you the cleanest possible video without any sort of electrical noise or lines in the video. And you'll see that at the end of this video, the footage that is pretty clean. Now there's not a lot that comes in the box. You do get um, obviously wiring loom. You get a, an adapter if you want to use this um, on a full size frame. And then you have a little adapter for your joystick. The joystick is not included, so you'll, if you want to use the joystick mode, you'll need one of these joysticks from an older camera. It looks like this, and it just plugs into the back here where it says um, TX, RX, or GM. That's for this joystick here. It defaults into joystick mode. If you want to switch it into uh, flight controller mode, uh, you basically can control this through a UART on your flight controller. You have to short these two pins and power it up and then it'll switch modes from joystick to the other mode and then you can connect it to a UART on your flight controller and use uh, run cam camera control to change your settings via your transmitter if you want to do that but I'm going to just show you how to use it uh, get to the settings via joystick here this is what I'm more used to and the last feature I think this is pretty new and not a lot of other cameras have this feature is if you do end up connecting it up to your flight controller and switch it into the flight controller mode you have the ability to upgrade the firmware on this um, through the SpeedyB app. So if you connect uh, through USB or Bluetooth on the SpeedyB app, you can download the firmware for this camera, any newer updates, and use the SpeedyB app to update the firmware uh, through the flight controller to the camera. So that's kind of a new feature. I'm pretty sure no other cameras have that. I think that could be the future though. Going forward, it's nice that you can uh, either get improvements or additional features on these FPV cameras and have to wait for the next version like you know, race for four, for example. All right, so this is how much it weighs. This is the 1.8 millimeter version, 5.8 grams, and the 2.1 millimeter version is 5.3 grams. Okay, so I got the camera powered up here. I just wanted to show you the settings real quick. It's obviously using joystick control mode. And you have your normal, uh, typical picture adjustment here. Uh, again, my, uh, all my reviews are standard uh, stock settings. I haven't changed any of these. Of course, you know if you're looking for different settings for the best settings, that's really going to depend on you and what you like. Uh, you perhaps maybe want to reduce sharpness. Some people don't like too much sharpness. You just slide that down. Not not that difficult to do. And you can just do that obviously with the joystick like this. And uh, and obviously uh, your screen and your goggles are also in it also look different so I could adjust this and make it look nice and pretty on the camera here but then it'll look it'll look different in your goggles for example. Alright let's go ahead and exit out of that. And we'll exit so we're not changing any of these settings so I'm not going to save any of that. And then if you want to change any of these uh, on-screen display type items here you want to hold the uh, up button and you can actually turn some of these things off. So I turned the pilot name off earlier. You can change that to default to run cam. Uh, Right now the timer and the voltage is on, as you saw there. Sharp view, I, um, I believe it's defaulted to on, so that's what you're going to see in the stock on the uh, sample footage at the end. But I actually prefer sharp view off because it's a little bit too pixelated for me. 
but you can you know obviously make that uh, determination on your own. And then uh, widescreen mode is off. I'm not 100% sure what difference this makes. It obviously it makes the center a little bit more squished. You see that there? So I think it depends on what kind of a display you have. So if it's more, if you have a more fourth display, I would leave it off as the default. And then here you can also switch uh, NTSC and PAL here. And that's, uh, I think that's it. I think the widescreen mode is actually the 43169 switching is what that is. I wish they would change that too. So, so it's a little more obvious as to what it is.